Hello, it's good to be with you. And today I want to go over a problem that we're going to use to start the class. And it's going to be a basic one that we revisit uh, several times during the course of, of the semester here. And that's what I'm calling the lifeguard problem. This is a problem we're going to use a lot because it's got a couple of key features. One is it's easy to write down. It's easy to draw a picture of. It's easy to plot the solution. And uh, we can describe it with one variable. So that, those are, that's a pretty good way to start. Here's the problem in, in the basic sense. Let's say you're at the beach and there's the sand and over here is water. And there's the water line. There's the difference between the sand and the water, the, the dividing line. Now, I know that this moves back and forth and there's not a hard line, but we're going to make a, a pretty simplified uh, analysis right now. Later in, in the course of the class, we're going to refine our model to give us a more realistic answer. But for right now, an approximate answer is a whole lot better than no answer. So that's what we're going to do. Alright, so we're going to say there's a swimmer, and that swimmer's in trouble. Okay, Maybe that's a, I don't know, ENGT 503 student uh, having trouble in the water there, and they need the lifeguard. Well, the lifeguard might be down here. There's a lifeguard, okay? And let's say the swimmer is 50 meters from the water, and the uh, lifeguard is also 50 meters from the water, just the other direction, okay? This 50 meters from the water on the sand, 50 or from the edge of the, the uh, water, and this is 50 meters from the shore, but now in the water, okay? We need one more dimension here to make this work. Let's say there's 100 meters in the y direction here, vertical direction here, okay? So 50 meters, 50 meters, and 100 meters. Well, it's pretty clear the lifeguard has to get from there to there in some optimal way. Well, what do you mean by optimum? Do you want shortest distance, or do you want shortest time? Well, if that was me, I'd want that lifeguard to get there as soon as he or she could. That would be great. I don't care how far she has to run. So let's do this. Let's, let's just draw some notional path here. Looks like that. Now we're going to assume that the path from starting point to where we get in the water is straight and the point from where we get in the water to the swimmer is also straight. All right. That makes the math a little easier. We're also going to assume that the velocity across the sand is about seven meters a second. Unless you're Usain Bolt, that's probably a pretty good number. And velocity through the water we're going to call that two meters a second. And again, unless you're Michael Phelps, that's probably a pretty good number. Um, I don't know about you, I can run across sand a lot faster than I can swim through the water. And I'm going to guess that's true for the lifeguard as well. So we're going to do, do, look for two lengths here. There's L1 and there's L2. So this is, in fact, let's make this L sand and L water just to make the, the, the subscripts match. Okay, so if I uh, want to find the uh, time to get from here to here, from the starting point to the swimmer, I'm going to have a total time that's the time across the sand plus the time across the water. Well, that makes sense. We should be able to do that. We've got distances, we've got time or rates of speed. We should be able to figure out time, right? All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to junior high school. Okay. When the earth was still forming and I was in junior high school, a teacher wrote things like time times rate equals distance. Mr. Weissel in my eighth grade algebra class probably wrote that down. Well, in our terminology, we're going to say time times velocity equals a length. That's how we've written it out. Well, I want to solve for time, so I'm going to write it out this way over velocity. Alright? No big deal. Well, let's look over sand first. I'll just put subscript S's on those. So my distance, or my velocity across the sand is 7 meters a second. Now, let's, let's draw this uh, triangle here that shows that leg we're trying to traverse here. There's X, there's 50, and there's L uh, sand. Get that head out of your way here. So that sure looks to me like the Pythagorean theorem. Thing. So let's try this. 50 squared, I'll get my head out of your way here in a second, plus x squared equals that squared. Well, I want the square root, so there you go. There's my first time. That's leg number one. That's when everyone, the 
uh, lifeguards going across the sand. Well, when the lifeguard's going across the water, that's a W, that's still 50. This is now 100 minus X. Alrighty? So this looks very similar. Okay, there's our two components right there. So the sum of those two must be the total time. Let's just write this out. Okay, there's, there's, there's the time across the water, or across the sand, I should say. And here's the time through the water. Again, I'll get myself out of your way here in a second. There we go. So there's the, there, there's the expression right there. We're trying to find the minimum of that expression. We're trying to find a distance, a point where the lifeguard enters the water, that gives the shortest time to get from the starting point to the swimmer. So there's a couple of ways to do this. Um, I'm going to step away from the board here and get on the computer. I'm going to show you how to do this in MathCAD. We'll do that first because that's a little simpler. And then I'll switch over and we'll do it in MATLAB. Right? Okay, here we are in MathCAD. This is a simple number crunching package we're going to use during the class. And the version I have on the screen right now is uh, MathCAD version 15. There are two versions available as I'm doing this video. The first one is version 15, and that's an older one. It's been around for five or six years, I guess. And the other one is MathCAD Prime. And this is supposed to be the replacement, but it isn't quite up to speed yet. Prime 4 is the most recent version as I'm recording this. Uh, Prime 5 is probably the one we'll switch to. It'll have enough of the uh, features from version 15 that we can make the switch. Um, if you find you can use Prime 4, that's fine. Um, if you can use one, you can use the other. They're, they're alike enough that transitioning between the two shouldn't be a problem. So as you can see right now, this is the I've got the uh, page up in front of me, and you can see I've got two page breaks. Part of that is because I'm zoomed way out. I'm at 100%. And the other one is that I'm at uh, using portrait mode on the page. So I'm going to go to 200%. I still have the page break there. So go here to Page Setup. And if you say Landscape, it goes there. Now, so we've got, there's no page breaks here. We'll be able to use the entire uh, area in this window. Um, MathCAD is kind of a scratch pad. You don't, you don't really have to program. You can program. You can do loops and conditionals and things, but you don't have to. And it's meant to be able to do... Uh, reasonably complex calculations without a lot of syntax, without a lot of programming. And uh, what's what we're going to do here? We're going to start by putting a label at the top, and we'll just we'll just write some text. There's two ways to do text here. Um, I can start this way, and if you uh, typed it wrong, um, right now uh, this is in I guess Roman font, and MathCAD right now thinks this is a variable name. Okay? If I were to type this, let me get rid of this. Let me type it again. And rather than, than click somewhere else and let it think this is a variable name, I'm going to put a space in there. I'm just going to hit the space bar and see how the text changes. It you know, went to a different font. Well, there's no such thing as a space in a variable name. So if you hit a space, it must be text. So that's what just happened. So there we go. By the way, there's there's multiple ways to do everything in MathCAD. Um, the other way to do this, uh, to put a text comment in there, is just to hit the uh, the quote sign, the double quote. If I do that, there it is. Now that box there is a text box. There we go. And of course, I can move these around however I want. So let's go ahead and type in the objective function. Let's type in that thing we just developed on the board. And just start typing, capital T, parenthesis, X. And I'm going to have to say that equals some expression. Well, there's a couple of different equal signs in MathCAD. And the one we're going to want is this one right here, the, defi the definition. This is where you're telling MathCAD something. There's, there's three others, and we'll, we'll go over those later. There's two ways to get this. One is just 
is to click right here, and the other one is to type a colon on the keyboard. So I'm going to type a colon, that's what I get. That colon equals is, is you saying, hey, MathCat, I want to tell you something. So let's go ahead and finish typing out the objective function. Okay, 1 over 7. Now the cursor right now is still on the 7. If I type something else, it's going to go in right there. I'm going to hit the space bar, and now the cursor is uh, highlighting the whole 1 7th times. Now I need a square root. Um, it's probably up here on the one of the toolbars. The fast way to get a square root is just to hit the backslash key on your keyboard. There it is. So 50. Now up caret gives you that. 2. Now I have to hit the space bar again or it's going to add to the 2. So hit the space bar plus x squared. Now I want another whole term. So hit a space bar, space bar, space bar, space bar. Now it adds to that whole term. And just write this one out as well. Plus now this one's going to be 100 minus x. And I have to take that whole quantity squared. You can see it's highlighted. So up caret, there it is. That's it. Now I've got the, the expression defined. I have to actually do something with it. Well, the first thing to do, let's plot it. So I can go up here and go to Insert, Graph, XY plot. Put X there and T of X here. Okay, so far so good. Now since I haven't given it any plot limits it's going to assume that X goes from minus 10 to 10. That's just its default. So I click there. Well that's not all that useful. I hope the lifeguard won't run backwards away from me, so minus 10 doesn't make sense. And 10 meters there isn't very far up the beach, so that's not all that useful either. Well, let's, let's fix that. Click here, click there, hit backspace, and now I go to 0. Click there, and go to 100. All right. Well, that looks a little better. There's an obvious minimum there, so there is a right answer. There is a minimum time answer. Let's go ahead and stretch that out a little bit. Click, Just click on the plot anywhere. I can grab that little box and pull it over. Okay, well that's better. And it's a little hard to figure out what's going on there. So maybe let's have the y-axis start at 30 instead of 40. I can do that. That looks pretty good. Maybe some grid lines would be good. So let's double click, turn the grid lines on. I can just hit apply to see what they're going to look like. That green, I don't like that green so much, so let's maybe make that a gray. That's a little more low key. Apply that. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, we'll take that. So the minimum is over here between 80 and 100. Well, tell you what, let's zoom in a little bit. MathCat is really good at letting you just sort of play around and explore. Okay, well, that's pretty good. I now know it's between. 85 and 90. By the way, this is pretty blocky. That's a holdover from the old version 15. I assume Prime will fix that. When you print this out as a PDF, that line is nice and smooth. It's its presentation quality. Let's zoom in some more. Let's go from 85 to 90. And now we're so close to the minimum that it looks flat there. Well, the reason it looks flat is because I've got this big uh, range in the y-axis. So let's go from 40 to maybe 42. Let's really zoom in. Okay, ooh, how about 40.5? There, okay, that's a pretty, pretty good. I can kind of see the answer now. It's near 87. Okay, so we were able to do that without any programming, without any, any fuss. So MathCat is nice and simple for this. Let's go back to uh, our original axis limits here. We know the answer is around 87. Okay, well, how are we going to find that? Well, let's do this. There's a minimize function in math, MathCat. And like many algorithms, it needs a starting point. So I'm just going to give it one. Lots and lots of numerical methods, algorithms, need starting points. They don't have to be very good starting points. This is a terrible starting point, but it'll work fine. So minimize t x. There it is, 87.208. That's what we found graphically. So we've just written the lifeguard problem down, plotted it, and 
showed where the, the minimum is. Now the only thing we don't know so far is we don't know what the minimum time is. We know that the lifeguard should run 87.2 meters down the beach, but we don't know how long it'll take her to get to the swimmer. So what we really need to do is calculate t of 87.208 and that is 40.166 seconds. So that's pretty good. That's what that shows right there. Well, this works, but this is kind of clunky. Let's do one thing. Let's assign this to some variable. And I'm going to call it x star. Okay, in mat in optimization, anything that has a superscript star on it uh, indicates it's the, at the minimum. So I'm going to call x star uh, that point right there at 87.2. This way. I can just type in x, oops, x dot star, and that dot is just a text subscript, so there it is. Now I've got this thing so it'll recalculate. Let's say that maybe I'm not running 2 meters per second across the beach. What if I could only run 1.8? What happens then? Well, let's just change this. The whole sheet now will recalculate, and there it is. Because of the way I've programmed this, I find that now the lifeguard has to run 88 and a half meters up the beach, and it takes 43 seconds to reach the swimmer. So there you go. Let's go back here and we'll, we'll re replace that with the two we had originally. There you go. So there's the lifeguard problem. This is it solved in MathCAD. Now we're going to stop and we're going to switch over to MATLAB, and I'll show you how to solve it there. Okay, here we are now using MATLAB, which is a very different animal than MathCAD. This is a programming language that's been around for quite a while. Um, I think it originally came out in the days of Fortran, and I learned to think about it as kind of super duper Fortran. Um, I like it quite a lot. It's extremely powerful and used around the world. I don't know if there's such a thing as a standard uh, scientific or technical programming language, but if there is, uh, MATLAB's probably pretty close to being it. Um, you'll, it's very common to see uh, job announcements that list MATLAB as a requested skill. So this is a skill that you can use that you know makes you a more, more valuable employee and it's also pretty well suited to what we want to do. So anyway when you fire MATLAB up here's what you get. And there's uh, five or six windows here that uh, do various things. We're going to do most of our work in here in what's called the command window. Over here it tells you the workspace. Okay, you have to load variables, you have to load data into the workspace to do anything with it. There's command history. Those are things you've typed in before that you can reuse. This is just a directory of, of what's in the current folder and I'm on one of our uh, probably our network drives here somewhere. And this is details on uh, commands you're using. So the thing about MATLAB, it stands for Matrix Laboratory. Now it does an awful lot more than that now, but that's originally what it was developed to be. And so it thinks in terms of lists of numbers. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a plot of our objective function. That's time for the lifeguard to get from the starting point to the swimmer. And we're going to uh, do an XY plot of that. And then we're going to use a MATLAB command and we're going to find the minimum of that objective function. So let's start by saying we want to work with values of x from 0 to 100. Now MATLAB is exceptionally powerful but there's there's some syntax there. I'm, some of the syntax is going to be new to you and all I can tell you is it's definitely worth learning. The, the, the power that this makes available to you is definitely worth the, the minor annoyance of, of learning a little little bit of syntax. If you know some other programming language already like C or BASIC or Java or Python or whatever this won't be too hard to pick up. So here let's let's say 0 to 100 Now that colon says give me a list that goes from 0 to 100 and it's assumed to be in steps of 1. Now I'm gonna if I put that there that uh, suppresses what's called an echo. If I don't put that semicolon there, it'll send everything it's doing to the screen. So if I don't put that there, here's what I get. And sure enough, there's a list of numbers from 0 to 100. If I go over here in my workspace, there it is. By the way, there's 101 values in this list because 0 is one of the values. And it has a, a one row and 101 columns. So that's a list where the numbers go out horizontally. Those would be like rows in a Excel spreadsheet. Well, most of the time I really don't want to see this stuff, so let's 
type in a command that goes CLC, that's clear screen. Okay. And if I were to, if I want to bring that command, what I can do is press the up arrow on my keyboard and that brings the last command. Well, I don't want that one. I want the one before it. Hit it again. There it is. I don't have to type it now. It's also over here. I can just execute it from over there if I want. So this time I'm going to put the uh, semicolon there. Now I don't have to erase this. It'll just rewrite it. But let's say I do want to uh, delete something out of the workspace. I can just go over there and click and delete. Are you sure? Well, I am. So now my workspace is empty. I'm going to put another list of numbers from 0 to 100. There it is. Now, I need to make values of time to correspond to those X's. So I'm going to say capital T and this is case sensitive. So capital T and little t are two different variables. Go 1 over 7 times SQRT. That's the command for square root. Okay, 50 up arrow 2 plus X up arrow 2 there. Now I can put all the spaces I want in here. It doesn't, it doesn't care. If you want to put spaces in there to make your commands easier to read, that's a good thing to do and MATLAB doesn't mind. Now this isn't going to work right now because of something that needs to go right there. X is a vector. There it is over there. It's a 1 by 101. Well, I'm trying to multiply a vector by itself. Well, there's a couple of different ways to do that. There's dot products and cross products. Um, this is another instance in which I just want to multiply the first value by itself, then the second value by itself, and the third value by itself, and so on. And I want the result to be just as long as the vector that I started with. So I have to tell MATLAB that of all the different ways to multiply vectors, I want that specific one, that element by element multiplication. And in MATLAB land, if you put a dot there, a little dot right there, that says to do that. So there we go, there's that. 1 over 2 times square root same thing, 50 squared. I'm going to put that space in there. 100 minus x. Again, dot, up arrow, 2, there. And so one way to count whether you've got all your parentheses closed, MATLAB will tell you, but if you want to track it on your own, you can say open, open, close, close. So 1, 2, 1, 0. Okay, I'm good. And I'm going to put that semicolon there because I don't want to see that whole list of numbers. There. Now I've got it. I've got two lists of numbers. These would be like two columns of numbers in Excel. If I want to plot one against the other, I can do that. And there it comes. Now the plotting features in MATLAB are extremely sophisticated. Anything you can imagine you can do. Rotate things in three dimensions, hidden lines, shading, whatever you want to do, MATLAB will do it. Um, this is we're just dipping our toe in the water right now. Now I want to modify this figure a little bit and I can do it in uh, two ways. I can start editing the figure directly using commands here in the figure window or I can just issue commands from the command window. Well, I'm going to do that. I'm going to use the command window for right now. One's not better than the other. It doesn't Whichever one you want to do is fine. So I'm just going to make myself some room here so we can see both. My desk here has three monitors on it, so usually I have the MATLAB window in one monitor and the figures in another monitor, and I'm listening to music in the other one, just because what are we, savages? Okay, so let's say I want to put some grid lines on here. There's grid. Okay, there's grid. Let's say I want to put some labels, some axis labels. Well, there's a command called xlabel. It labels the x-axis. Maybe let's call that distance. And those little single quotes say whatever goes in there is what's called a string variable, letters instead of numbers. So there's that. Let's say Y label now. And this is going to be time in seconds. There. We have that. That's nice. Okay, and I can change anything about this plot. I can change the uh, axis limits. I can change the grid locations. I can change anything you want. Now the one thing about this is this is really just a list of numbers. This is not a function. It's a bunch of numbers uh, plotted on here with straight lines between them. And if you want to see what that might look like, ooh, okay, hang on. 
Yeah. I'm having to uh, get MATLAB to work with Camtasia here, so give me a second. There we go. This is an, a figure editor, and I can edit absolutely anything I want here. So let's click there. And right now I don't have any line markers. Okay. Well, let's go up and put his dots in there. And I'll close that. Maybe make this a little smaller so I can see it here. Along with MATLAB. But see all those dots? Those correspond to those values right there. This really is just a list of numbers. This is not a function. Well, if I want to find the minimum, on that list, there is a command that will do that. There's a command that will do absolutely anything in MATLAB. Let me make this just a little smaller for us. There we go. I really can type in min t and I get the number 40.1661. That's, well, that's what we uh, found in MathCAD. That is the right answer. But this just happens to be the smallest number on that list. This may not be the exact minimum. To find that out, I've got to define my objective function t as an actual function. So let's do that. Let's let's work with it that way. So I'm going to delete that. Um, there we go. Let's. Okay, now I'm going to clear the memory. The command clear does that. So workspace is now empty, and I want to clear the screen too. So I'm going to type in clc, and that clears that. So we're good to go. Now I want to make t a function rather than just a list of numbers. And to do that, I do t equals just like before. But, and again, why? I don't know. That This is the, the MATLAB syntax. That says make t a function of x. That little ampersand is its, is its uh, uh, warning that says this what comes next is going to be a function, not a list of numbers. So rather than having to type it all out again, let's just copy this. And I'll paste it back in here. I don't need the t equals part, so I'll delete that. There we go. Now when I go over here, this when I hit enter, okay, this is here, but now it's not a list of numbers anymore. It really is a function, and there's the function. So in order to find out what the minimum of this is, I'm going to need to execute something like the min minimize command that we used in MathCAD. Well, there's many different functions in the uh, toolbox that we're using, the optimization toolbox. Okay, and there, so there it is right there. Now MATLAB has uh, commands that are grouped into what are called toolboxes. These are the ones that are uh, available in this academic version that I'm using here at Purdue. And these are the ones that MATLAB, well it's actually MathWorks is the name of the company, that MathWorks sells. These are the commercial versions. Now lots of other suppliers sell toolboxes and it seems like about every other academic research group uh, writes their own toolboxes. Lots and lots of research labs at university have their own specialized toolboxes to do special things they need to do. We're going to be using this one right here, the optimization toolbox. And the command we're using for this, in this case, is called fmin search. Now, if you look in the appendix, I think it's appendix C of the book, um, there's some MATLAB examples and this is one of them. Okay, this is what help looks like in MATLAB. Now, if you want to go out on the web, just go to Google or whatever your favorite um, search engine is, and you can type in help command and then MATLAB, and you'll get all kinds of stuff. There's a huge, huge group of MATLAB users around the world, and because of that, there's lots and lots of help information available. There's lots of tutorials, there's lots of videos, all kinds of things. So if you have the, the willingness to work through it, there's plenty of study materials for you. So I'm going to click on fmin search, and here's what the help pages for functions in MATLAB look like. There's the command and a couple of different ways to use it. There's what it does. There's descriptions of what the variables mean. Okay, that's stuff all down there. Here's, here's different ways to uh, apply it. And there's some examples. You can just cut and paste code right out of these examples here. Okay. So, it wants you to hand it a function. Well, there's a function. So I'm going to type in fmin search and there's the function now. Like like Math, MathCAD, this needs a starting point. So I'm just going to give it that same starting point of 0 and hit return. Now if I don't assign the result to a variable, it uses this dummy variable called ANS, which I think stands for answer. Well, that's nice, but maybe let's let's do this. Let's make x 
star equal the, that result. Let's just do that. Copy, paste. Okay, now x star is going to equal fmin search, the results of fmin search. So there it is again. And now x star is there as its own variable. I don't need that anymore. Okay. What I can do now is I can ask it to evaluate t at x star. And there's our answer. Okay. And same answer we got before. 87.208 pretty much. And 40.166. So these results uh, match the ones we got in MathCAD. All right, so there you have it. We've developed an objective function for our lifeguard problem. We did that on the whiteboard. Then we solved the problem using MathCAD and again using MATLAB.